We've got a few minutes now. Um, we're looking for Jeff Woods now. I suspect he's more than two years of age. Um, if he can come to the commentary box, that would be very good. His wife, oh dear, he, she must be a brave. She's lost him. So Jeff Woods, please come to the commentary box. So as I say, as they file back to their static display, just have a look at some of the qualities of these restorations. Quite outstanding and a great, great tribute to their owners. Uh, do go and talk to people on the static stands. There's some quite interesting stories about the histories of these tractors. The whole vintage tractor movement is really dominated by the restoration. Hello, Trouble. You haven't even got a number, you three. <laughs> um, so there are clubs, there are movements about for, for the restoration of these tractors. If you've got an old tractor you want to restore, um, you know, join a club because they will help you. There are local clubs, there are national clubs as well. Um, it's a wonderful movement. You meet some smashing people in the uh, vintage tractor world. It's... Um, great deal of camaraderie and a good deal of fun. Quite a lot of money raised for charity, vintage uh, ploughing matches, road runs, supporting all these local events. So it's a very, very positive movement and, uh, and it's a very popular movement. It seems to be gaining in strength from year to year. Factors coming in from America, like this wonderful John D. R. Um, as well as the indigenous uh, UK manufactured tractors. To the name before 1960, we like to refer to them as vintage tractors. Tractors after 1960, we call them classic tractors. And um, that's just a donation to, to tell people when they're entering different classes that if you're, if you're vintage, you're in pre-1960, and if you're classic, you're post-1960. And as I see these tractors firing past, I mean, if you went to buy a new Massey Ferguson 35X, you went in the showroom, that is how it would look. A truly wonderful restoration. And that really, in, in general terms, is, the, um, is the, the whole thing about this, trying to get them back to their housing condition. Hello again, sir. I do give out this call once again, ladies and gentlemen. If you see a little two-year-old with a Union Jack flag and a superhero T-shirt on, please, please, please bring him to the commentary box. His parents are absolutely desperate to find him. So, Cohen Houghton, two years old. Please, everybody, just have a quick look around you. See if you can see this little lad. He's got a Union Jack flag and he's got a superhero t-shirt on. And he was lost near the fish and chip shop. display that we had this morning. We're going to have a rerun of that. Just do have a look at these fabulous brands as they come around the main ring. Quite amazing to see. Uh, again, I think we're right in saying that the oldest vehicle here today is a brand, so that just puts it in context. All the colours of the rainbow here with these different tractors coming past us. This selection of marshals, you won't see a better selection of marshals anywhere in the country. Absolutely wonderful to see. And as I say, we are a pretty broad church. We welcome all sorts of different vehicles. Doesn't matter how loosely connected to agriculture they are. Um, but uh, we like to, be, to invite them all to our show. 
And as I say, these marshals coming past me now, you will not see a better selection of marshals than those. Absolutely fabulous things to uh, see. We've talked about the Marshall steam engine earlier. Well, Marshall is a very successful engineering company, and they got to see which way the wind was blowing and decided to practice with a thing for them. They were making a terrific lot of flashing boxes and saw benches and things. So their tractor is predominantly, really, I suppose it's fair to say, designed specifically for driving stationary, flashing boxes, etc. But the level of restoration on some of these tractors is truly, truly extraordinary. And uh, that, um, that sound, as you hear them come past, the single cylinder, they have a piston inside them about the size of a two and a half gallon bucket. I've never seen such a thing. And a multi-fuel engine will run on any type of hydrocarbon from petrol, methylated spirits, right through to the heaviest oils. A very innovative tractor in their day. Our two caterpillars at the end of the day, and again, American technology really from the Second World War. A great way of getting the power down onto the ground and actually coming back into fashion now because farmers are very preoccupied with cutting down on compaction of the soil and tracks whether they're steel or...